One of the hardest parts of learning how to make security and privacy a natural part of your lifestyle is learning the terminology. There are tons of convoluted terms that make absolutely no sense unless you have gotten used to them. So how do you use the cybersecurity tools if you don't know what they are used for? Now, I believe knowing and understanding the definitions of these terms is one of the first steps to making security a part of your lifestyle. So today I am sharing 15 different terms that are common cybersecurity terms that you will run into all the time. Now this video is sponsored by Ubico, so stick around to learn how this little teeny tiny tool can be a major device used to protect your online accounts and to hear about an incredibly great limited time deal. Now for us consumers, regular people who are just trying to find ways to protect ourselves while we use the internet, cybersecurity is getting to be more and more important. We see hacks happen all the time in the news, so we have to take steps to protect ourselves because nobody else is gonna care about your online security more than you do. Cybersecurity is just that. It's protecting your online accounts through methods of security. So let's discuss some common attacks. A cyber attack is when a malicious actor uses technology to attack a target or a big pool of targets in order to disrupt, disable, destroy, or control data. And that can mean their intent is to steal information, mess up the integrity of data, or disrupt a computer system. Unfortunately for us, there are a ton of different attacks attacks that can happen. And often we see multiple attacks of different kinds happening at the same time, which means that we also have to use multiple methods to secure our online accounts. Now, one common attack is account takeovers, where an attacker, for example, uses stolen passwords to log in and take over an account. So in this case, they have somehow figured out your password and they can use it to log in. This is why it's not only important to use different passwords on every single site, but also why it's important to check where your account is logged in from time to time. If you have ever gotten a prompt on your phone that says, we noticed a suspicious login attempt from New York, USA, was this you? And then you hit like yes or no. It could be somebody attempting an online account takeover. Now, if you are finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so much to me. Subscribing is a simple way of showing me which videos you find helpful and valuable, and it tells me which direction I should take my channel in. Now, similarly, a brute force attack can happen when an attacker submits many, many passwords in the hopes that eventually they will guess your password correctly. This is a kind of attack that can take mere seconds if an attacker is using just a big list of common passwords, which is why it's important to use unique passwords that are not easy to guess. Now here's a list of a whole bunch of common passwords, but this is not an exhaustive list. There's another type of attack, which is called credential stuffing. This is a type of brute force attack where an attacker finds a bunch of leaked usernames and password pairs, and they just try those pairs, those usernames and passwords on all sorts of other websites to see if a user is using the same password on other sites too. And again, another reason why we use different passwords everywhere. Now you have probably heard of spoofing and phishing, and I'm not talking about like going fishing in the river, which is definitely something I've done a lot in my childhood in Missouri. And when I go to North Carolina, good old Wilmington, but I'm talking about phishing online and it's spelled P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. But both words have similar meanings. One isn't as delicious though. Online phishing is a method of maliciously retrieving information from target victims. You probably heard of email phishing, and this is when an attacker uses realistic looking emails sent to your inbox to trick you into giving up personal information or downloading a file that could do harm to your computer. Now this is done by creating phishing attacks, and usually an attacker is trying to gain access to financial information, like credit card numbers. Spoofing is a means of delivery. So DNS spoofing is a common attack in which a malicious actor sets up a fake site to resemble a real site, and they use this fake site to trick a user into giving up personal information by filling in a credit card payment form, inputting their username and password into a fake login page, etc. Since we are not usually skeptical of the sites that we visit, if they look correct, then it's hard to tell if a site is fake or not. It's very effective. 
Now earlier I mentioned downloading a file that could do harm to your machine. That's called malware. Malware is a type of software that could carry something harmful. Malware is intentionally used for bad deeds, like infecting your PC with a virus, or spyware, or ransomware, which could give an attacker an entry point into your network to steal data or wreak all sorts of havoc. So what is this ransomware that I mentioned? Everybody already knows what a virus is, but what is ransomware? Well, we know that it's a type of malware, but this one specifically is used to lock up or encrypt your data to make that data inaccessible or render it useless, potentially destroying the data in itself. An attacker could use ransomware to lock or encrypt all of your photos and videos stored on your computer and then demand a ransom to unlock the data. This is why cybersecurity experts recommend making more than one copy of your data. So if somebody does get access, you are not forced into paying them to get your data back. Then we have SIM swapping, which is another common attack and one that I have covered extensively on my YouTube channel. And this one also allows for account takeovers. An attacker can use other attacks like phishing to steal the phone number information for a target and swap that phone number to the attacker's phone. By doing so, then the attacker starts to receive all the text messages and phone calls that should be going to the victim's phone. SIM swapping is the malicious version of porting your phone number to a new phone, porting a number whenever you switch to a new cell phone carrier company or whenever you buy a new phone. The last attack I wanted to touch base on is called MITM or a man in the middle attack. This attack happens whenever an attacker's computer is listening into a conversation on both sides, and they're snooping on that information or relays or alters the data. Meanwhile, the sender and the receiver on both ends think nothing is weird going on, everything is normal, and they believe that they are communicating directly with nobody in the middle. These kind of attacks commonly happen on open Wi-Fi networks, where the security of a network is not set up to keep all the different devices that are on that network private. So one of the ways to prevent a man in the middle attack is by only connecting to Wi-Fi networks that are secure and private. It goes a lot deeper than that. I know, I know, Wi-Fi pineapples, etc. but that's the basics. <laughs> so it seems like we are being attacked from every single angle all the time. Is there no way to protect ourselves? Well, there are, but if you only use one tool or system and you ignore all the other ones that are available to you, you are only protecting yourself from one attack at a time. And when attackers are using multiple types of attacks at any time, doing this this is kind of like leaving your back door wide open while closing the garage door and saying, yeah, my house is secure, the garage door is locked. Protect yourself with tools like the YubiKey by Yubico. Yubico is sponsoring this video and they are offering a really, really great deal for the week of Black Friday of $25 off a $100 purchase. Now with data privacy getting more and more important, I use YubiKeys to protect my online accounts. These are little devices that replace those six digit codes that are sent to you via text message or email. And they are more secure because an attacker would physically need to steal this device and have your password in order to log into your accounts. See, attackers can easily trick you into typing your password and a six digit code into a fake site like I had mentioned, but hundreds of sites have upgraded to support these kind of hardware keys instead, using a different protocol that never sends a six digit code for anybody to steal. The YubiKey won't even work if you plug it in while trying to log into a fake website because it will recognize the a fake site long before we might notice any red flags. This is called a hardware authenticator or a hardware token. These are physical hardware tools designed to protect you online with an additional step of authentication. So either after you've typed in your username or password, or you can use it as a replacement entirely to your password. It works because the website will not allow you to log in unless you are in physical possession of the hardware key and you actually plug it in 
pin or tap it with NFC right here on the front. Using a YubiKey can prevent many of the attacks that I listed in this video. And if you run into a site that only supports those six digit codes, you can absolutely protect those accounts with a YubiKey too. And I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel showing you how. To use it, all you have to do is plug this into your phone or your laptop, or just tap it with NFC on the front to easily log in. No more messing up those six digit codes when typing them in or waiting for a text message to come in with your one-time code. I use YubiKeys absolutely anytime they are supported because they make logins a lot faster and they are more secure. And since it's a one-time purchase, it's way cheaper than getting your identity stolen. Yubico is offering my viewers a discount on the Yubico 5C NFC, but they've also got an epic deal going on this week for Black Friday, and I highly recommend this deal. It's a really, really, really good deal. Until December 2nd, you can get $25 off a purchase of $100 or more, which is basically two keys, on the Yubico website. So that means you can grab two keys for an excellent deal. And since I recommend owning and setting up two keys, one as a primary key and a second one as a backup in case you lose the first one, this deal works perfectly to give you peace of mind. All you have to do is go over to yubico.com slash store to snag this discount until December 2nd. And thank you so much to Yubico for sponsoring this video. Now you may have run across sites that have started advertising passwordless logins or the use of pass keys. Now a passwordless login allows you to authenticate by using something like a hardware key, a biometric feature, or a link that is sent to your email to allow you to log into your account. One of the options amongst all of the ones available is called a passkey, which is a very fast and secure way for websites to authenticate you using a special key that's either generated and stored on a mobile phone or it's generated and stored on a hardware key. The key or the phone can then be used to verify you as the actual account holder, as opposed to typing in a password every single time. But since so many sites still use passwords, I use something called a password manager to store all of those credentials. I still have hundreds of passwords easily. I think I have over like 400, which is ridiculous, I realize, but also I do tech reviews. So that's kind of normal for what I do. But you probably have a hundred as well. And since each and every single password needs to be different to protect ourselves from those attacks that I talked about previously, there's no way that I can memorize all of them. And I would probably lose a notebook if I wrote them all down in a physical notebook. So I store them in a password manager. Password managers allow you to save or bookmark all of your usernames and all of your passwords into a secure digital vault. It's kind of like a bank vault, which can only be unlocked with your master password, your pass key, or a special secure set of credentials. Now these password managers are encrypted. They allow you to only memorize one master password and just mentally offload the rest into the vault. Most password managers from reputable companies will also autofill your credentials whenever you visit a site. So you don't even need to copy and paste the username and password whenever you log in. And that makes the entire thing even more convenient. This can also help you recognize spoofed sites as the password manager will not autofill the credentials if a domain, the .com for the website, does not actually match the one that you had originally saved for the username and password. Now using a password manager on top of using a YubiKey and even some password managers support YubiKeys are two of the biggest steps that I recommend whenever getting started in security and privacy. Now comment below, let me know what terms you would add to this list. Should I do a part two? Because <laughs> again, this is not an exhaustive list. Thank you again to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. And thank you so much to Yubico for sponsoring this video. I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you soon. Bye y'all.